Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? And I was wondering how things are going out in Phoenix now. Are, are things kind of getting back to a state of normality out there? I mean, yeah, slowly. It's still, um, I think people are still a little worried about going out and stuff. But uh, our last show a couple of weeks ago was packed. And I think uh, I think the, the fear is starting to lift a little bit. And um, the venues are open and bands are trying to get out there. So yeah, it feels really good to finally get back to it. Yeah, I know. I mean, same here. You know, we had, we had a, it's been a nightmare. It's not really over yet, but I was in New York uh, a couple of days ago and it was pretty cool being on the subway and everyone wearing masks. It made me feel more comfortable. You know what I mean? Good. That's good to hear. Yeah, we'll be there in, in June. So I was wondering how things were going there. By then, I think we should be a lot better than it is right now. I hope. We know, yeah. We said that a year ago, didn't we? <laughs> so if you like, I know you went to the University of Michigan because you're a proud, you're proud of that, which Very is cool. Good. If you spent your whole life in Phoenix, because I don't know if I even know that. No, I grew up in Chicago, um, in the outskirts of Chicago, in a in a, a little little suburb called Lake Zurich, and it's not so little anymore, but it's a, it's close to the Wisconsin border, actually. And um, I studied piano there and classical piano. And um, I went to Michigan every summer to um, a big music camp there called Interlochen um, National Music Camp where I studied more. And then when it came time to go to college, my whole family went to the University of Michigan. So I went really? there, studied psychology and did, some, did a lot of music on the side. Uh, I played piano for all the opera students for their their voice lessons and stuff and that's how I paid some of the bills <laughs> and uh, how did you end up in Phoenix and when well after I graduated law or uh, undergrad I wanted to go to law school and um I uh, actually had a boyfriend out in LA and I wanted to get as close to the west coast as I could so I started applying to all the law schools out here and uh University of Arizona gave me a really nice scholarship so that's where I landed and I just stayed you know you when you, when you go somewhere for law school, you set up all your professional contacts and you start making all the, you know, all the job prospects and all that. And your all your friends and all your lawyer friends and all that end up being from here. And so you just sort of stay. And um, I never meant to, to live out in some hot weather place. I don't like hot weather. It's not my thing. <laughs> you know, I really miss the snow. I really miss the seasons. But here I am 20 years later and I'm still, I'm still chugging it out. So um yeah, I think you just get stuck here. I know uh, University of Arizona is in Tucson. So were you right. there for a little while before you moved to Phoenix? Yeah, just for just for law school, and then um, and then uh, the job offers came up from Phoenix. So it'd be, Phoenix is a big city, you know. So yeah, oh yeah. Um, I came up here and I worked for a judge for a little while while I studied for the bar, and then uh, I got my first job as a prosecutor and just stayed. So that's cool. Um, you know, everyone knows that you were in the Love Me Nots for a long, long time. I think like six albums, right? Yeah, it was about, <laughs> it was about 10 years. Yeah, I remember. Um, <laughs> you know, you were there from almost the get-go. I was at the beginning and the end. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, but I followed you guys all along, even though, even though I wasn't there in the middle, you know. Um, I want to talk about the darts. Um because soon as the band broke up, soon thereafter, Love Me Nots, you and Christina got together with, I believe, Michelle and Ricky Sticks. I was the original lineup. And you guys really got out of the box really quickly. I mean, there was a buzz right from the beginning. Talk about that. What was that like at the beginning? Well, it wasn't, I don't know if it was entirely by accident, because um, the Love Me Nots were on a, on a good high peak right then. We had just come out with new albums and toured it in Europe. And just as that band was dissolving, you know, Christina and I were like, let's, let's start this girl band we've always wanted to do. We've always talked about it. You know, we've always loved the sound of girl groups. We've always just, that's been one of our, our things that we all love, we both love. And um, so we were like, well, who, we need to flesh out this band. Who do we get? And we started sort of racking our brains and going through our list of friends. And, you know, who do we know who would jump right in and, we kind of didn't want it to be Phoenix centric. We wanted to open it up. We, we knew we could do things cyber wise and record that way and everything. And we were willing to do that. And 
um, you know, bring people out for, for, for rehearsals or go out there or do whatever we needed to do. That's, and, we, and the Love Me Nots, our drummer, Jay, lived in Brooklyn and we were very used to yeah. having a bi-coastal band. So that wasn't a big, a big deal to us. So um, I knew Ricky from um, way back when she was in all kinds of bands, but most recently uh, she had been in the Dolly Rots and I had seen her play and she had gotten really good by then um, playing with the Dolly Rots. And so I asked her, she was in immediately. Um, Michelle, I had seen play in her band Brain Spoon in LA a few times. I don't think she had done too much besides that, but um, she's just a, an amazing player and an amazing songwriter. I love her songwriting. And um, so I, I reached out to her and she was in immediately. And the great thing about these two was that uh, they just didn't need a lot of prep time. You know, you could send them a song and they could go into the studio in LA the and, pros. Yeah. Yeah, and, and throw it out there. And they, they put in the effort, they put in the time. And there was a, a great little studio called Kitten Robot out in LA where they did their, their tracks. And then they would send their tracks to us here and Bob Hogue at Flying Blanket and Mesa would record us and, and you know, even, even let us record ourselves at his studio after hours sometimes. And, and me and Christina would do our tracks here. And then he'd sort of blend it all together and his magic blender and it, would, it just came out great. And so, yeah, right off the bat, I think within a month of signing those guys up, we had a record. And, First EP, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you, I think when you have girls like that who, I shouldn't say girls, women like that who are very plugged in themselves into their own connections. Um, Ricky especially is really good at self-promotion and all that stuff. And it's like you absorb all their contacts too and all their connections and all their fans sort of jumped on board. And so it, I don't want to call it a super group because it was tiny, but like, you know, it kind of acted like that where you, yeah. it just, it just had octopus legs from, from, from the get-go. And it was, it was amazing. We, we couldn't have been happier. And they were really willing to tour. So we just hit the road immediately. And, you know, if you want to add in with the changes as I go along, feel free. But I know you put two EPs out and then Meow came out in July 2017. And you did a lot of touring on that record. That's when the that's when you started touring a lot, pretty much. Right. Was it still the right. same lineup at that point or did you switch? Same lineup, same lineup. Um, right after our first EP was out, um, one of my favorite labels in Europe uh, or in England, uh, Dirty Water Records, made contact with us finally. I've been trying to reach them for the Love Me Nots for a million years and never got the time of day. But for whatever reason, it finally clicked with, with the darts and um, they reached out to us and they actually had a member of their team that had moved out to Phoenix. And so we connected and I ran um, a leg of Dirty Water and Dirty Water Records USA for a little while for them. And um, so when Meow was ready to come out, they put it out and that was huge for us because mm -hmm. they're just a great label and um, really got behind the promotion for that and um, helped us you know, connect with promoters and everybody we needed out in Europe. I mean, the Love Me Nots had all that already in a way because we had we were on a, a, a French label out there, but um, it, it really helped to have Dirty Water behind us and, and running that show. They they just do a great job, and we're still very connected with them. They just put out helped put out our our seven inch uh, Love Tsunami. They're they're one of the the backers for that too, so they're they're still in the mix. But great people. I remember you asked me about them because, and I told you that Muck and the Myers were on that, on that label. Yeah. So I knew they had a good reputation. Um, yeah. In 2018, um, the second record came out. I, oh, oh, what you did was they combined the two EPs into a record right. in 2018. So Dirty Water, once they put out yeah. Meow and we toured it, Paul from Dirty Water said, you know, it's really a shame that you're sold out of these EPs and, you know, you're still touring and we don't have anything besides Meow, but you have all this backlog of music that nobody's getting. So do you mind if we repress the two EPs as an LP, which was perfect because there were exactly 12 songs. <laughs> it was like a perfect LP length. And so they repressed it as the darts. And um, so even though that was sort of earlier music, it came out as our second our second LP on Dirty Water. Yeah. One thing I love about you is you've been in the, in the vinyl game all along because I have the first Love Me Nots album on vinyl. You know, so you've been doing vinyl all along. I'm a big vinyl fanatic, so I love that. Um, 
In 2018, you were signed by Alternative Tentacles by the legendary Jello Biafra. I do remember when you met Jello, when you were in the Love Me Nots, and you asked me to call him. And I was like, you want me to call Jello Biafra? And I got to talk to him on the phone for a while. And that was one of my fun experiences. Thank you for introducing me to him. What was it like, you know, first meeting him and then having him sign you? such a oh legend that he is it's a ridiculous dream um just uh and not to say it's all um you know roses he, he's he knows what he wants and he's he's rightfully um he he i don't want to say it's a lot of pressure because it's really not that kind of thing but it's um he's an artist you know and he he wants the very best from his artists and you know, the Love Knots were on our own label other than the French label we were on. And our, our French label was very hands-off and very appreciative of everything we did and didn't really get involved too much on the creative end. Uh, and we loved that as the, when we were in the Love Knots because we could kind of do whatever we wanted and our, our labels, you know, we, we were, it, it, um, it was great. But for the first time now um, with Jello, we have some oversight and, um, it's been really amazing. We, he, so when we, we met him in the Love Me Nots, he thankfully was a huge Love Me Nots fan. He used to play our stuff at his DJ sets and he even came up on stage and sang with me once out of the blue in LA and just really get really, he's just an amazing, super down to earth person. You know, there are no, there are no artificial boundaries with him. He'll, he'll talk to anybody. He'll do anything. He's, he's very into just supporting great music. 100%, you know, and um, so, yeah, he, uh, he came to see the darts. And as I understand the story, um, this was all behind the scenes that we didn't know about, but his, um, his label manager, Dom Davey, convinced him to come see the darts when we played in San Francisco. And Jello's first reaction was, ah, eh, you know, I'm not going to like anybody as much as the Love Me Not. So whatever oh, was involved in, really? I, you know, I'll go, but don't get your hopes up. That's a very jello response. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Very honest. And um, but they came to the show. And uh, by the end of the show, he was at the merch table chatting with me and going, this was great. This is way better than I thought it was going to be. I'm so impressed. And um, and, you know, Dom talked to me at length. And by the end of that, that conversation we'd already planned to do a seven inch with, with AT as quickly as we could, which we put out with them right away. Um, had two, two songs, Bullet and Subsonic Dream on it. And um, so I, my Dirty Water USA helped put it, that out too. So we sort of did it as a split. And um, so that was the beginning. And the minute we had a full length ready to go, they were off and running and there was really no oversight on that record. They just took the tracks we came up with and, and put them out there. They're really the only thing that we heard from Jello was I, uh, I got a call from, I know, isn't it weird to get a call from Jello? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, it was like their Christmas or Thanksgiving or some family holiday. And my phone rings at the table with my family and it's Jello. <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, I got to take this guys. And I ran outside and, chatted with him and I remember standing there outside in the backyard and freezing cold and talking to Jello, Jello Biafra and him saying, you know, I like everything about this new record, but the vocals are too fuzzy and I want to be able to hear your voice better. And that's one of the things I really like about these records. And I've never really been able to hear it well on the darts like I could on the Love Me Nots records. I know you love all this fuzz, but, you know, let's, let's try and clean it up a little bit. And so um, he ended up talking to Bob Hogue, our producer, and they cleaned things up the way they wanted and it sounded great so on this new record that we just finished up on um he was really in the mix um and still is we haven't quite finished all the mixes yet but he's one of the things he asked for on this new record was that he wanted to work with bob personally he really fell in love with bob and bob fell in love with him and they are just really tight and they talk for hours and they know exactly what they wanted to do on this record and he's very involved. So it's, um, in fact, I even wrote about 30 songs for this record during the pandemic and he whittled it down to just a few that he thought were really, really the right ones and said, keep writing. You know, I know you've got better stuff in you. Keep going, keep going. And um, 
You're too yeah. easy to you're too easy to interview. You're like a runaway train. <laughs> sorry, can I you, know I'm not letting you know where it is. I just step back for a second. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, I got I wanted to talk about uh, I like you, but not like that, because it came out on May 24th, 2019. My birthday is May 24th. I remember oh, when it came okay. out, I was like all excited, you know. They released a record on my birthday. But <laughs> there were some huge shows that I I don't want to just go past because Melissa joined you right before. Did she play on that record too? She did, right? She did. I yeah. interviewed her and I forgot that. Of course she did. But um, you ended up doing punk rock bowling. And I saw the, uh, the footage from that because you played on the main, a main stage. Uh, talk about that because that must have been one of the highlights for you in your career. Oh doing that. That, day, that day was insane. Um, just to be on punk rock bowling to begin with was, was a dream. And then to find out that we were playing the main stage and then AT had a, a alternative tennis list had a booth set up. They just happened to be going that year and they don't go every year, but they went that year instead of a booth. And so they were like, you know, we should make this the album release because we're going to be there and it's a big show and let's do it. So I, we had been on tour anyway, and we ended up going out there kind of exhausted already. And that morning of the show, we did a stage it for whatever reason, uh, from Las Vegas that morning. So we were, you know, we had done this huge show on the stage it and then um, went to, the, went to the, the show and played the main stage and then exhausted, ran to the booth to start signing records. And it was unbelievable. The, the line out the booth went like all the way down. I don't know if you've been to Punk Rock Bowling, but it's all the booths are on the street. And the line went all the way down the street. Wow. And I mean, I'd never seen it. Like, it was so, it was the coolest feeling ever. And we signed a gazillion records and had, did a bunch of interviews. And AT was thrilled. Our our um, photographer Kelly, who did, did the photographs, Kelly Kelly's on. awesome. Kelly, and she was there. And Gil Roberts, who did the layout for the, a lot of our records, he was there. And so it was like the whole team was like on board, and um, everybody was signing stuff. And it was just a blast. It was like a big party all day after that. We were freaking exhausted by the end. <laughs> I was genu genuinely happy for you because you are a hard worker. You and Christina have been at this for a long time. So to see you guys have success like that was really great. And then, of course, the damn tour. When I heard about that, I was like, ah, Melisa, when I had Melisa on the show, she, she gave me the, she told me how exciting it was. And she couldn't believe it because she was like, I'm in the band and tomorrow I'm on tour with the damn. I mean, it, it was crazy. Like it was crazy. Um, yeah, we, she joined the band in July and we toured with them in October. And so we did like this mini, we, we, we were like, we got to get her ready. She's got to get ready. She, we've got to start feeling each other's vibes. You, you've got to at least do a tour before something before you go yeah. on tour with the damn. So we threw together this little, this little West coast tour with her and, we all sort of got our bearings and got used to playing together. And I've known Melissa a long time here in Phoenix. Um, she used to, when she was starting out, even bring like her gear over and, and you know, Michael from the Love Me Nots would like fix her amp and stuff like that. And she like help her out with her pedals and stuff. So she's been in the mix a long time. She's just the sweetest, sweetest human being you will ever meet and completely unruffleable. Like you, you can't, she never gets upset. She never, at least not that we see um that she's just a, a really solid sweet person and i really uh, love talking to her she was awesome great yeah yeah she's i mean she's she's too she's not artificial she doesn't she's not the kind of person that spends a lot of time um keeping up appearances or trying to be cool or anything like that she's just more she just is cool yeah <laughs> she's she's just she, just she is, cool. is and and it's so refreshing in this business to meet somebody like that it really is you know you just get who you get and I know yeah, I'm she moving, killed it on the tour. I know I'm moving along quickly here, but I wanted to hit you with a few different things. So you had all this great momentum going and everything's going great. And then the pandemic comes and it kind of puts everything on hold and stuff. And, and here's what I want to talk to you about. Like you and Christina have had to go through a lot of changes to keep the band together, drum drummers mostly. Has that been really difficult to do? And do you have a permanent drummer now? Well, um, is it hard to do? Yeah, although I don't know a band that doesn't usually go through this. Um, and the Love Me Nots did too. We had a lot of different drummers um, over the years. It's, it's, 
I don't understand the phenomenon really, but yeah. it's hard to keep a drummer. And I, you know, if I had to, if I had to use my psychology on it, I'd say um, drummers are a great, a great drummer is hard to find. There aren't very many of them really out there who um, are as good as a session drummer, but are really willing to tour and really amazing on stage and put on a great show. It's hard to find them and who are available. So, I mean, cause yeah, once they're, once they're great, they're on tour with somebody already. Right. So it's hard to keep them around. And I think that's true of every band. You're always, you're only as good as your drummer, honestly. And so there's a, a real competition for those drummers. And um, so, yeah, when um, Ricky stepped down, we, uh, I don't want to say floundered, but yeah, we, we, um, we were very lucky to find Yanel Aguirre here in town, who's a friend of a friend and she's an amazing drummer. And she, um, she stepped up and said, yeah, I'll, I'll pinch hit and whatever you guys need. And she actually did a hypnosis fest in Mexico city with us and went on tour in Europe with us. And she was fantastic. And, um, uh, for a lot of reasons that didn't work out. And then Maggie stepped in and for a lot of reasons that didn't end up working out in the end. And, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard to keep it going for sure. But, and some of it was illness, nobody's fault. And some of it was just, you know, just um, personality and, and band politics and things like that that aren't any fun, but it, it worked, you know, it's, it, that's the way life is. And so you have to find the right fit. Was, and, it, Bob, um, was it Bob, did Bob, Bob Hogue, who you worked with forever, by the way, who's really good. Uh, he, did he, I think he filled in with the Love Me Nots at one time. Did he ever play with yeah. the darts too? He stepped in with the darts a couple of times, just for a few shows. Love the Love Me Nots. He was actually our, our official drummer for West quite a Coast while. Coast drummer, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, he he actually played on Upside Down, Inside Out, and um, and even on some songs on, on other on other albums. But um, he toured Europe with us, even when we got stuck in Europe for three weeks when that Iceland volcano went off and we couldn't fly home. He was there with us for all that time. <laughs> wow. he's, he's done a lot with us. He's a member of the family for sure. But yeah, so um, the answer to our to your second question, do we have a permanent drummer? After all the drama, we've decided at least for the moment not to have a personal, a, a professional permanent drummer, but to rather sort of dip into our whole um, girl team thought process and <laughs> have this like team of drummers that we can rely on. And that even applies to, you know, substitute guitar player, whoever we need, like to have this team of women who just is great on stage and knows the set and can cool. help each other out and be comrades about it. And, you know, we help each other with each other's bands and this concept is working out great. So we have actually several drummers on board ready to go and they're amazing. And the first one is Mary Rose Gonzalez who just played on this record from Chicago, so. Wow, that's fantastic. It's yeah, it's great to have those kind of resources for sure. Um, Reese, the most bringing us right up to date here in April, you guys um, put out Love Tsunami. I actually played it on my show a couple of shows ago. Oh, thanks. Really great, great, great sounding great as ever. Thank um, you. And, and then you started talking about the new record. Are these three songs that you just released also going to be on the new album? They are, but they're going to be new, uh, new players and, and new, uh, new versions, new, new versions. Absolutely. Oh. So Love Tsunami, the EP or the, the seven inch um, for the first time in our in most of our lives, even Melissa had only really recorded with Bob. Bob's the go to man here in, in Phoenix. But um, um, I had been dabbling for a couple of years on bass in a band called the Funerals here in Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, Gerald, who's the singer for the Funerals, is a really good friend of ours. Um, he also teaches at the Recording Conservatory here and is a he used to be an intern of Bob's and things like that. So he's kind of in the mix and the family, too. But um, Gerald opened up a studio and um, the Funerals have been recording there. And he said, hey, if you, you guys, the darts ever want to do anything, let me know. Yeah, I've got great gear and I'll do it for cheap and let's try it, you know, and and he's got a great ear, too. So we were like, oh, you know, let's just give it a shot. It'd be fun to just do something with somebody new for once. And so we ran in there and um, yeah, Gerald did a great job with those. And it was super easy. We were in and out of there in a day. At that time, um, we didn't have Mary Rose on board yet. So our friend Eddie from here in, in Phoenix 
jumped in and played on that record. And um, you'll see his picture on the back of, of, of the, the EP when it comes out. But yeah, that was our, our first um, time recording with a dude. <laughs> but, uh, Are you going to have copies for when you hit the road? In a oh, yeah, of we um, we pressed uh, some very unique copies. Um, there's a place down in Tucson called Precarian Cuts that does hand cut lathe lathe uh, discs. And I mean, he makes everyone by every single disc handmade. Wow. And, uh, they're beautiful and they're, it's very hard to describe how special these discs are. So um, we had just 75 of them pressed. It's hardly any. And um, we're set, we're, we're gonna save a few for each show this summer for each Love Tsunami tour show so that um, we can get those out to people. But um, then our, our, uh, our label in, in Europe, Adrenaline Fix Music, along with um, three other labels out there, Dirty Water and Beluga Records and Ghost Highway Records, they all got together and they're gonna do like a more full release of that EP. Boy, uh, everybody <laughs> wants the darts. <laughs> A lot I don't of know, labels. It's, it's a big project, you know, and it's a lot of money and they wanted to do it like a worldwide release. So they're doing that together and that'll be available over the summer too. They're still working on getting that press. You know how the vinyl thing is. It's yeah. Oh, it's a mess. So, it's so you, you started talking about the new record and Jello is doing that with Bob. Right. So it's, it's Bob at the helm. Bob or Jello is, is sort of behind the scenes and sort of whispering in Bob's ear and telling him what he wants and, um, and so before each mix is finished, um, Bob actually calls Jello and that gets his two cents and makes the changes Jello wants and that kind of thing. So we're really, really lucky to have all these ears on it. It's, it's sounding so good. I think we have four, four in the can so far and, um, you know, the rest is still coming. It's going to be 13 songs and, um, plus a little hidden track on the vinyl and, um, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Is, is that Alternative Tentacles here in Dirty Water in Europe? This is just AT. A so worldwide. Worldwide, yep, yep. And we're trying to figure out the very fastest way to get this press to vinyl. Um, even AT is with their other releases. Is Everybody's floundering right now trying to find out how do you get vinyl? Let's get vinyl. Let's get vinyl. Quick, 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 quick. Because it's it's sometimes eight months delay to get vinyl pressed right now and nobody can handle that. <laughs> That's not good. So uh, so the companies that can do fast turnarounds are, are getting the business. I love talking to you. You're just like, just rolling along. <laughs> I love it. So you got all these dates coming up. And I know you'll be here on June 9th at the <laughs> Middle East. Yes. And, you know, Boston loved the Lumbee, not, Love Me Knots, and I'm sure they loved... You played here with the Damned, right? I wasn't living yeah. here. Yeah, we did. It was amazing. Um, we, we played so many places with the Damned. It was a full U.S. tour, and um, it was just a dream come true. But, yeah, we haven't been back to Boston since then. That was in... Um, when was that? 2018, I think. I was and, living in Pittsburgh, so I missed it, unfortunately, but I heard it was awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, we actually, we played Philly. We didn't play Pittsburgh, but um, yeah. So it, yeah, it was an amazing tour and just uh, those guys are so fun to hang out with and they were so generous and they brought us up on stage all the time and during their sets. And, you know, when you, when you find yourself on stage in LA, waltzing with Dave Vaney and on stage drinking port you know <laughs> it's like this ridiculous what is going on I saw a lot of I saw a lot of great photos and stuff from that tour so I know you had a blast so you're doing some Midwest dates first and then you're coming to the East Coast right um as usual you know our day jobs and all that stuff we we tour carefully and we tour at select places so that we can make the most out of it. And um, you know how we've always had to do that, even with the Love Nuts. I really am laughing because I know what it's like. <laughs> it's, it's hard. Like, yeah. It's Very hard. Well. And yeah, it's been worth it. And it, it works. I mean, for anybody out there who's trying to juggle all this, it works if you plan it well and you do your promo. But um, yeah, so we're doing uh, sort of several long weekends. And then um, we do, we start with the Midwest. We do Indianapolis and Chicago and Detroit. And then the next one we do um, Boston and Philly and Brooklyn. And then the last one we're up in the Pacific Northwest and we do um, Seattle and Portland and um, Everett. And 
then in August, we are planning on heading to Scandinavia for a week. And Whoa, then, really? Yeah, hope, yeah, and then October is going to be the big, the big Europe tour. So the rest of Europe will get us in October. Well, that's fantastic. I'm so happy that you got all these tour dates. Wow. Yay, I know. We're so, we're so hungry for it. It's been so long. Oh. Wow. Um, so the best place, I guess, for most people right now, well, AT probably has their own stuff, but Bandcamp, you can get pretty much everything there. People want to buy all your past things. Sort of. Um, AT, AT is the place to go right now um, because they, um, for a lot of reasons, have decided just to sell off their site and not on Bandcamp. So, okay. Um, so most of our vinyls and all of that, you're you're going to want to go straight to Alternative Tentacles. If you're in Europe, probably Dirty Water and Adrenaline Fix Music are the places to go. Um, but uh, but Alternative Tentacles is the place now. Um, if you are looking for some of the weirder merch and stuff like that, that might you might not find on AT, we'll sell that ourselves on Bandcamp. But I don't think there's anything on Bandcamp right now that you can't get on AT. So I just go straight to that site. If I and were. you're going to be bringing a lot of, of your back catalog with you on the road too, right? We've got, we've got, I just ordered a whole bunch from Dirty Water. So we've got the darts, we've got Meow, we've got... Um, I like you, but not like that. We've got um, the new e, the new seven inch, and I can't promise this, but with any luck, this new snake oil record will at least be out digitally by the time we hit the road. That's up to Jello and Bob to get this thing moving. <laughs> I don't know; it's taking a while. <laughs> wow! So, yeah. Um, I just want to ask you one more thing. You just you're so fun to interview because you just go right through it all. Are you listening to a lot of new music or are there any cool bands that you listen to that you like? Do you have time for that? Or, you know, I don't listen to a lot. I am very ashamed to say that because I, I would love to, to support as many bands as I can. But what I listen to is mainly um, things I just happen upon if I'm scouring social media a little bit or um, word of mouth, but um, one of the bands I really like that I was turned down to by a fan of ours was Small Town Tigers. I think they might be from Spain, um, and um, they were actually scheduled to do some some dates for the Damned and had to drop out in the last minute because of the pandemic stuff. But these girls are awesome, and um, so I really like Small Town Tigers. I'm a big fan of LA Witch. Um, I've They're always cool. liked Death Valley Girls, um, and. Uh, and yeah, Ricky's playing with Death Valley Girls right now. So that's- That that is really funny. Cause I remember for a long time, I was trying to get the, the Love Me Nots and the Death Valley Girls together. Yeah, I remember that, right? you know it, someone that you played with ended up in Death Valley Girls. I'm like, whoa. I'm really happy for her. I wish her all the best of, of course. And actually the darts ended up playing with Death Valley Girls in England. And I finally got my shirt signed by Bonnie. You know, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, those two bands together, that must have been quite a, a awesome. show. So much wow. I love them so much. But yeah, so those are my those are my top three right now. I, I really like those three bands. And um, I we, we played a show with Ellie Witch and the Paranoids recently. Oh, I like them. Yes. They're good. And yeah, I was surprised. I wasn't, a, I, to be perfectly frank, I wasn't a big fan of their recordings. But Suicide them, Squeeze, they're both on Suicide Squeeze exactly. label. And I yeah. love that label. They, it seems like they, everything they touch turns to gold. They just, they're, they have excellent taste. Um, they're, you're, their curators are, are fantastic. But um, when I saw the Paranoids play live on stage, I got it. Like, I understand they, they put on a great show and I urge you to go see them for sure. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. And uh, I am going to do my very best to get to that show on June 9th because I want to see you guys. And uh, it's been so long. And please, uh, you know, hi to Christina and Melissa. And uh, I'm with you all the way, man. I'm, well, I'm I, I just got to put in my two cents here and just say thank you, Steve, for all that you do. Not You did so much for us over the years, but also you do a lot for other bands. And it's your your influence can't be can't be underestimated you, too you do nice. a lot more than you think you even do i think so so thank you for that well thank you and i look forward to seeing you guys yeah we'll see you soon hopefully okay thanks Bye.